Okay. So hi everyone. I'm here with Lisa Gunshore and I just felt inspired from the heart to interview her because she had contacted me and asked me to be in a summit and I had never heard anything about her and it was one of the most heartfelt summits I've ever been in. It just felt, I mean, coming from her every time I got onto the summit with her and and on Zoom with her, I felt really welcomed and honored. And um, it was just the most beautiful experience, really, for, for a summit. I loved it. And the people that I met and the clients and the students that happened from that teaching, you know, comes from her. She magnetized in beautiful people as well for me to assist through that whole couple of months and that process. And so, I wanted um, to just extend who she is. She's becoming a big online presence and she's had several summits right away. And I guess I was really impressed with the amount of research and knowledge that she puts into everything. So being a psychic and a healer as she is, and as a lot of you are, and, and, and I am, going into the right and left hemispheres of the brain is not easy. And actually, technology cannot be easy, and we often hire other people. And she just dove in and started doing all of these different things that I would like her to share. And so she'll share a little bit about her mission and what she's doing online. And so that if you want to get onto her email list and connect in with her and watch her podcasts and upcoming summits and whatever she has that you know about her, and also then she'll tell us a little bit about her story, which is really fascinating as to how she got into all of this. So we'd love to introduce Lisa Gunshore and feel free to just tell us a little bit about your mission and what you're doing and how to reach you. Oh, well, thank you, Eve. And the first thing I wanna say is just thank you. It's an honor to have you ask me to do this. Um, I felt very connected to you right away when we first met and which is why we're here now and you know is our connection and you were such an integral part of that very first summit in the beginning of this journey and it's just just wonderful you have such a light and and you're so heart centered yourself and so it just makes it easy to to connect and do this work together and to collaborate so thank you very much for that so I appreciate that very much. Oh, yeah. you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. If you see it, if you see it in me, you have it in you. So true. So true. And um, as far as me, um, I'm a multi-generational psychic medium and channel, and I'm also a functional Ayurveda practitioner. And so this is something that runs on both sides of my family, mom's side and dad's side. Um, and, um, you know, had experiences since I was a little kid. So I'm just really a natural mystic. I'm highly creative. Um, I can't, grew up in an environment where my parents were highly creative. So it really enabled me to do the work that I'm doing today, truly. Um, and, you know, had a very um, interesting split life, really. Um, I worked in fashion for 22 years and went to college and went to culinary school. I have a culinary degree. And so it was definitely creative, you know, the fashion and the the arts and, and the cooking and all those things. Um, so that was, you know, my linear life. And then I had this very non-linear life where I've been working with clients since 2006 as a psychic medium and talking to people who passed away and grief counseling and, you know, uh, helping folks really align with their soul purpose. And so I've been doing both of those things and living those lives. And for the past five years, I've been full-time spiritual work. So um, I have been, since 20, 2015, I've been able to do this full-time, which has been such a blessing and a gift. So. And how did you come about, did you get a message to do the summits or how did that happen? Yeah, so um, the summit was kind of interesting. So I really, as soon as the global event occurred, and really it started in 11.11. So in 11.11, there was a stargate that opened that activated the indigo pattern on the planet. And I'm an indigo, and I definitely felt a complete shift that day. So on 11.11, um, I started restructuring my platforms. I started looking at what I needed to do. And I started trans channeling for the first time in many years um, in sharing with the public in many years. So I've been a trans channel. I've been doing that 
since 2008, but, you know, writing out transmissions, but I really started sharing it with the public again in November. And so that kind of started. And then in February, I was sort of like, kind of impatient. I was like, I feel like no one really cares about this and I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. And you know, all the things we do questioning why we're doing it, like, what's the point? And then the global event occurred and um, it was like a switch was flipped for me and it was this sudden uh, urgency to hold space for the planet through this global ascension. And so for me, um, what happened with these summits is I just got a message that we needed to hold space. So that was kind of how it started was you need to bring a community of light together and hold space for everyone who's going through this massive change. Everybody is going to be in quarantine. It's going to be challenging to be with yourself. You know, this was the message I got. And so I really had to sit with that for a couple of days. Like, well, how do we hold space? You know, what are we going to do? And that was when One Heart, One Earth was really born. I actually channeled a transmission about One Heart, One Earth, that we're all one. And it's very similar to something I had channeled back in 2008. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to have this One Heart, One Earth Global Healing Summit. And I just started emailing people I knew that were in this you know, world of healing that I trusted that I'd been working with for years. And I said, okay, like I'm going to do this summit. Who wants to be a part of it? And those people connected me with people, which connected me with people, which is how I connected with you and so many incredible healers. And it started out, we we're going to do a week and that week turned into two weeks and we added on more. And um, we ended up, I think, with like 50 hours of content from those two weeks of just presentations and calls and healing work and soul retrievals and meditations and clearing plagues and illnesses and all sorts of things that we did. And so, yeah, it was really dropped from spirit and it was like okay and and what's interesting is leading up to this i had been restructuring my platform so it sort of just fell into place what i needed to do because i'd already been doing some things that were also spirit led so it was kind of like all of these things kind of fell into place where it's like oh that's why they were telling me to do that like i moved out of my office in september of last year of 2019 they told me to go remote and I've worked remote most of my life. Like I've worked remote as a, as a psychic on the phone, plugged into the wall, like back, you know, in 2006, I was like doing that. And so, but I, I did have an office and met with people in person too. So it was kind of this call of like, go remote. Okay. Now we can restructure your platforms. Okay. Now you're going to start having these calls. So it all like led to this place of this global healing summit. Wow. And I remember being in it and I remember all of a sudden we're going to extend it. And there were so many healers that came forward and so much um, content. And because time is an illusion, people can go back and still receive healings from every single healer, every sound healing, every shamanic healing, karmic release, whatever I did, whatever everyone did. Do they, do you still have access? Can people have access to that on any of your, your website or anything like that? If they want to go back and experience that. Yeah, that's a great question. So it, our website is oneheartoneearth.net and oneheartoneearth.net has really become a collaborative effort and it's really incredible. And we have contributors from all around the world who are contributing art photography, videos, articles for our online magazine. And so we have all of this information and content to connect in with, even outside of the summits. Um, and then the summits are available for just a one-time fee for lifetime access. And it's actually really not that expensive. It's a dollar an hour, um, essentially. So um, right now you can choose between the three summits we've done. We did the April summit. We did a summit in May that was just a weekend summit that was a movement summit. And then we also did a summit in June. Um, so we have three of them. It's 111 hours of content that we've created between these three summits. And you can decide if you want to participate in just one um, or if you'd like to pay a fee to have access to all three. And then we 
also are opening them up every now and then when I when spirit says okay time to open this one up this energy needs to be released kind of thing um, so we did just do a weekend this last weekend opening up the very first summit um, in April was open all weekend and we'll be doing things like that again um, all throughout the rest of this year because the message I get now is it's all about integration so we've created all this beautiful content and now it's about integrating it we also are releasing an audio package that will be available as well for um, $11 and that will be coming out here in the next week probably the next week we'll be done with that and that'll have all three summits on it as well so you can listen to them on SoundCloud so that's coming out too that's amazing and so if you had one healing session that would be at least $111 if you worked privately with a healer and you're saying that the whole summit, that two week summit that I was a part of is $111? Yeah, wow. the entire thing, it's such a deal. And it's amazing. It is, and you know, just so everybody knows, like the monetization is really going towards a very specific purpose for One Heart, One Earth. So I would like to take One Heart, One Earth to the next level and make it a nonprofit. And our goal is we're building a light community virtually, but we'd like to actually start building light communities, physical ones with earth ships that you can go live in that are sustainable and with people that are all like-minded. That's where I'm going in the next decade, I'm hoping. And so um, everything that you spend on the One Heart, one earth page to access a summit or for the audio package coming out we'll have some other things coming out as well um, the t-shirts any of that stuff that money is going towards our nest egg of taking this to be a nonprofit. so my my hope is that um, you know we give goop a run for their money and that our online magazine and our content is a place for everyone to connect into and that the contributors will eventually be you know paid for being part of the nonprofit and so that's where that's going and that's why it's monetized and and it's worth it you know you have to have an energy exchange for the healings and so this is an opportunity for you to give something to receive and you're going to receive way more than $111 just like you said Eve I mean each each one of you that was part of this summit are worth far more than that and what was offered is worth far more than that I mean you can you can have a massive awakening by participating in the summits easy oh exactly because time and space is an illusion and so it doesn't matter that it happened back then you can tap into that energy and that frequency and still receive the healing still be in circle still be one-on-one -on -one with that with that practitioner and um that's beautiful and i love the nonprofit. And I do love, once a month I have it in my calendar that I need to contribute something to your, um, you know, a video or something. And so that's wonderful that you're so inclusive. There is no feeling of competitiveness. Mm. You're just including everyone um, and not feeling as though I don't want to promote them because that would take away from me, which is real old world, but it's around. Yes. It is around, and yeah, I think what's beautiful about One Heart, One Earth is we're all helping each other. And the reality is even though we all do the same thing, we all do it differently. We all have different modalities, different experiences, different energies, and there's no one, one healer that connects with every single healer and every single person and every single community. And so I think it's important, the diversity is so important because we all connect with different people, you know? And, and like you said, every, every person who, every presenter, facilitator that was part of these summits was so heart-centered and so open and so collaborative and it, it made it so special compared to what it could have been. Like it was really, it's a really special beginning to our year this year. Yeah. So tell me the one thing I remember that I really loved was, I'm guessing it was a podcast and it was about the different dimensions. And so we hear all the time, you know, the fourth dimension, fifth dimension, six. And, you know, as, as a healer, I've been in this for 30 years and I felt like I should know, but I didn't know exactly how to explain it, you know, and you broke it down. You researched and she broke down the, these are all the different dimensions. This is what this means on the fourth, fifth, sixth. And then she took it way up to the 11th dimension. And by the time she was done talking about that, 
I felt so expansive and unlimited as though anything was possible. Whereas five minutes before I watched that, I think I had heard something on the news about, you know, the world's becoming extinct. And it took me from like, oh my God, to a, you know, a possible fearful place to this huge expansive up leveling of my frequency. And that's what I'm finding is that what you're doing is you're up leveling people's frequency very quickly and they have access to these podcasts and different things so that it's in their own time while they're, you know, making dinner or laying down and meditating, they can just pop on and listen to things and watch you and hear something that could uplift you. And if they love it, they can go back and listen to it maybe once a week as a daily, as a weekly uplift, correct? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about YouTube, right? Is that you yeah. can create content and then it's there and available and accessible. And I really did not think I would ever be doing a PowerPoint presentation on string theory. That was not what I thought I'd be doing. Um, I have researched, um, I'm a big researcher and and a big part of that is to understand what I'm seeing because I'm, and I'm sure you've experienced this Eve, like you see all these different dimensions, various locas, all this, this, uh, all these different constructs and matrices and things when you're meditating and you're journeying and you're channeling and all these things. And so in looking at all these different dimensions, I in the past had definitely seen things that I needed to go research and understand. And what I noticed was is during this global event, there's all this talk, oh, we're going to 5D, we're going to 5D, we're going to 5D. And I was like, well, does everybody even know what we're talking about? Because I think it's easy to hop on the bandwagon and say, oh yeah, we're going to 5D, but like, what does that even mean? And so I thought, I wanna explain it. Like, I wanna know it. I want to understand what that means. And so I did a bunch of research and built a PowerPoint presentation. And I said, okay, we're going to do, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what, what are these different dimensions and how do they interact with one another? And what does it mean to be 5D? And really what came out of that is our slogan for Buddhist biohacker, which is conscious content for 1111D, because um, 1111 obviously is a, you know, power numbers, master numbers, ascended master numbers. I mean, it's, it's a genetic pattern. It's a quantum physics code. I mean, it's all these beautiful things. Um, but it also was this idea that in this idea of, you know, being for me, like I think of myself as a visionary and from this like far in the fewer, far into the future thinker, and I was like, well, why just go to 5D? Like, why are we all stuck on this 5D thing? Like, let's get out of that and just go straight to 11, which there may be 144D. And there's, they, they say in quantum physics, like they don't know what's next. Like 11, 11 dimensions is the farthest they can see. But even now quantum physicists are saying, well, maybe there's 13, maybe there's you know 44, maybe there's 144. Like they're looking beyond that. And so the 11D is really anything is possible, everything is real. And what that means is, you know, you can change time. Time is a construct. You can reverse the past. You can transmute and transform your genetic structures. Um, and, and this is not new. I mean, honestly, in metaphysics, this is not new. I mean, we've talked for years about, you know, going from a double helix to a triple helix to the 12 you know, pointed helix and all these things about changing our genetics. And you know, Eve, as somebody who performs soul retrievals and works as a shaman, like that's what shamans have been doing for thousands of years. And so they have been operating in all of these interdimensional realities simultaneously with the linear reality we're experiencing. So it's actually just putting a name to something I think we already were experiencing, actually. When I did the research, I was like, we really are already doing this. But it's about living in it day in and day out and not getting caught up in the three-dimensional or the four-dimensional realities, which is where we've been sitting, you know, where it's like work and money and jobs and all the things that are involved in that rather than operating in this space where really anything's possible and this is all just sort of matter that's around us, you know? Yeah, and where can they find that exact talk about the different dimensions and, and what is it called? 
Oh, that's a great uh, question. So we've created a series as part of Buddhist Biohacker, which is called the 1111D series, the physics of the new reality. And so when you go to Buddhist Biohacker YouTube, you can either go to the Buddhist Biohacker playlist or we have an 1111D playlist. And it's listed on there as one of the episodes. It says, what are the 11 dimensions? So it's, it's just called that and you can go find it there. And, um, and it's got a subtitle, I think, understanding the 11 dimensions, but it's right on there. And we've had more presentations since then. So um, that is the initial presentation about what the different dimensions are. But we did a presentation on linear time versus spiral time. We had Tim Sanders on from Omnia talking about quantum physics and the dodecahedron and how you can actually rise above EMFs. Um, we had Donnie Dust on talking about ancient technologies. Um, we actually have a Vedic astrologer coming on to talk about how Vedic astrology can tell you what's happening in present time and what's so important about this time. So it's really been an incredible series. So it's a great question because it's my favorite. Like there's so many great things we're doing, but the 1111D series is special for sure. I loved it. And even I could even see myself going back and not listening to what all the dimensions are because I listen to them. Not that I have them all memorized, but but when you got to the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, there was this transmission, I'll call it, this feeling. And I would love for you to explain the word transmission for the lay person. And there was another word, trans something that you st said you started doing in October. Trans channeling. What's, what, are the, oh. what are the two definitions? Oh, yeah, that's a great question, too. And I'll say, you know, I even go back and watch my shows. For that reason of what you're talking about is the transmission of energy because that energy did through that presentation it was like it landed in me at the same time i was communicating it so when you say a transmission it's like yes it was and i still go back and watch my shows because the shakti of what's coming through me what's coming through you and any other person who's been on the show it's it's pretty incredible actually you can re receive so much energy from this um for yourself and you know trance channeling is channeling in trance and so what it means is is that you have you leave your body and allow another energy to come into your space to to transmit information and so channeling is the same thing but you can do automatic writing without being in a trance and so trans channeling is essentially saying i'm not even in my my physical structure anymore there's another energy or or a collective group that's in the body and so that's what trans channeling is and a transmission is something that is being transmitted from those higher dimensional frequencies or, or light energies um, through you, whether it's through writing or speaking or music or, you know, there's all sorts of ways that this can happen. Um, art is another form of that, right? Any kind of creative production can actually be transmission. So when people are an artist and they're creating these beautiful works of art, they're ultimately transmissions from their higher self, from a higher collective, from whatever. And so that's what that is. So the idea of trans channeling and transmissions is just this energy that lands through the body. And the cool thing is, just like you're saying on that video, it projects out and, and connects with everyone. It's, it's far beyond our ability to understand, I think. Yes, so you, I could say that the transmission that I received in that 1111, when we got up to the higher dimensions, is the same thing as a healing. Yeah. It felt like something came in, this fusion of light just came in and just uplifted my consciousness out of any worry or fear and into a place of, I'm not only okay and I'm gonna be fine through this process, but I am going to soar. And that energy stayed with me. And so again, those are things that you can go back and listen to for that weekly, or you know, maybe you need that five days in a row if you're having a hard time, you know, and, and whatever you can find that gives you that uplift, whatever you want to call it, you want to take note of that and go back and do it again and again and again and again. Even the summit 
for $111, you can purchase it, but then you have it for life. And if you loved five of the healings on there, you can go back because time and space is an illusion. You can receive the healing again and again weekly if you need to. And I've done that with, with a specific healing where I just go back every week and listen to it um, because I love it and I still receive that healing because we have to keep our vibration high with what we're eating, staying hydrated, you know, what are we watching? What are we listening to? But also exercising, you know, with our body and, and, and healings and everything to just keep our frequency high so that we're, as we're around the collective and everyone's panicked and worried and fear and death thoughts and all of that, that we can maintain our excellence. Yeah, it's very true. And, and I've done it with your, I loved your, the first journey that you did with the, the family tree and the summit was so powerful for me. And I've listened to it many, many times for that same reason, because mm -hmm. you continue to go into that energy. And each time you do, it's another layer of healing. It's another peeling back of that onion, you know? I mean, it's just another clearing. And so it's incredible. Like I said, I listen to, to the, stuff, the shows over and over. I listen to the summits over and over because it really continues to just peel all this stuff off of you and let you step into that higher space. And that is, you know, the message from Spirit was to create a resource of light. And that that is in fact what it is. It's, it's a light resource to be able to expand your own light um, help you with the ascension process and allow you to do your inner work in a, a supported space. Right. And so just to let all of you know, when you, as you receive this, there will be her YouTube channel and all of the different ways to get in touch so that you can get your, your daily or weekly infusion and just keep you connected. It's so important because she's, uh, I feel like you're on fire right now. I mean, you're just producing, 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 producing. And, and then you're doing podcasts. I know I'm in one at some point in August, I think we're doing another. And you have all of these podcasts. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing in the podcasts and what types of people you're interviewing? Yeah, for sure. So I um, created the YouTube channel Buddhist Biohacker and Buddhist Biohacker was the host for all the One Heart One Earth summits, but it's also a podcast that has grown so fast. We just hit our first milestone, which was a thousand subscribers. And we're actually like over 1300 now, which I can't believe. Um, and really it's, I'm just getting all of these incredible people in front of the community. I mean, that's actually my mission. And what's interesting is, you know, your life purpose can shift and change. And my life purpose absolutely changed. Like my life purpose went from whatever I was doing before, which was important. Um, but now I feel like it's really important for me to give a voice to each and every person um, that is doing healing, that is helping with the ascension, that is filled with light, that has heart-centered energy to be able to share themselves. And so we have monthly features. We have the 1111D series. Um, we have guests right now booked all the way through almost the end of the year already. Um, so it's just been incredible. We just did our 48th episode and actually we'll hit 50 at the end of the day today. Um, in just a short time. And it's not a short time because there was a lot of work that went into making it happen, I think. Um, and all of the people that I've connected with, uh, you know, the, the beginnings of this was a lot of people I'd worked with for years and knew, you know, their skills and talents and wanted to support them. Um, but I'm meeting new people every day and it's just unbelievable. So it's been a real gift. It's been just a blessing for all of us and what's amazing is it's not even about the show it's about the community and that's the thing that i'm really loving is we are building a community we have so many great people that want to be a part of the community that are sharing their own thoughts their own channeled messages their own wisdom um and it's just a platform for all of us to be able to share ourselves and to help hold light and the codes of ascension like during this time that's so challenging and we could all be feeling very alone and instead I feel like we all have this great community that we didn't even have before it's kind of crazy so if people are on your email list do they automatically get a message every time you do a podcast or do they have to go to YouTube to uh, how does that work 
So we have a few great things. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm intentionally reducing the amount of um, newsletter communication because email, we get plenty of that already. And so what we're doing right now is if you are on my newsletter list, which is a good place to be because we do send out some things, um, on Fridays, every Friday, you receive a weekly guide or a weekly review of everything we just did for the last week. So it's gonna tell you what shows we had you know, what you missed and, and all the links to listen to it on audio and also to watch it again on YouTube, depending on what your um, choice of, you know, how you choose to listen to and receive the information. We also send out a guide on Sunday evenings that tells you what to expect for the next week. So if you're on the mailing list, that's what you're going to get from me. Um, there's minimal other things that we send out, although we'll send some things out when there's a summit for sure. And then we also have this really new feature on the website, which I'm excited about, and that is your guide to conscious content. So when you go to lisamgunshore.com and you click on Buddhist Biohacker, you'll see a button right at the top that says view our full schedule. And we're really trying to replace the TV guide because our, our mission is to create conscious content and to be the new media. And so when you go to that view our full schedule, you can see everything that's booked through, through Telus far as we have it. So it's all the way out to October, November right now, I think. And you are able to see what's coming up. So it's really cool because you can say, hey, what shows am I going to watch live this week? You know, what do I want to watch live and what do I want to connect in with? Because the fun of the live is that there's live interaction. There's comments and questions and, and all of you as participants and audience members get to be able to connect with the guest and to be able to, to share your own stories and to ask your questions of them. And so it's really cool. So, so it's a really good way for you to stay connected is to view that as well. And then we also have um, our social media outlets. So Buddhist Biohacker on Instagram. We also earned our community page on YouTube. So we're really intentionally focusing on our community page using that because it's a one-stop shop. When you go to Buddhist Biohacker on YouTube, the community page is right there. It's right part of the channel and you just click on the tab and you can see everything that's going on. It's actually its own social media feed. Um, and then we have our discussion forum on Buddhist Biohacker, mewe.com, M-E-W-E.com, which has a privacy bill of rights. So I actually left Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, um, or Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I'm still on Instagram. Um, so uh, mewe and Instagram and YouTube are my primary outlets right now. So those are all the ways that you can find out what's going on. You can see those things directly on the channel. You can go to our website and look at the full schedule, or if you're on the mailing list you're going to get an update too. Wow. Wow. And what, how do you stay balanced when you're using your right and left hemisphere so much with all of the research and all of the computer and the technology and the psychic, because I'm sure you're still doing psychic readings and healings, right? Yes. And so how do you stay balanced? That's a great question. I um, am very compartmentalized with my time. So I have, I'm very structured and actually, you know, I had to be very disciplined with my spiritual practice and my health um, back since 2011. So it's been, you know, a decade almost of being disciplined, which has really helped. So um, I'm very disciplined with my schedule. So um, I compartmentalize, like if I'm doing uh, readings or working with patients in Ayurveda or soul retrievals, those kinds of things, um, those time slots are blocked out in a way that I have space and time to be in that space. Um, I have set time every single morning that I'm responding to emails and scheduling and things like that. And then I have days compartmentalized out too. I mean, I'm really compartmentalized. So I have some days where all I have days just for production where I'm working on the movie I'm working on other content. Um, the audio is part of the production. I mean, you have to go in and edit and, and get everything ready to go to audio. So that's a whole piece. Um, so I have production days. I have writing days for my blog and for channeling um, and I have as far as like work-life balance I do have time blocked out too where I go hike I go channel um, I go swimming I go to the gym I practice yoga at home um, you know I make sure that I'm you know really resting moving my body 
you know, taking time. It has been very busy and I definitely have had to adjust to my new schedule. Um, but you know, it's all working out in a nice way. So I, you know, it's the, the time compartmentalization is a big thing and that's tough because there is no time. And so, you know, my time management, I actually manage my calendar by the moons, even on my eye calendar on my computer. Um, so I manage everything by astrology and the moon and, and the circadian rhythms. So even though I'm saying, oh, this podcast is at this time, it's actually because I know that that's a stronger day. Like Wednesdays are my strongest day of the week energetically. And so that's why we have podcast Wednesdays because it's a great day for me to communicate and talk to everyone. You know, I, I would rarely ever do a podcast on a Monday or a Tuesday. Um, I do some, but those are lower energy days. So it's an interesting journey because you are managing through linear time. And at the same time, I really try to go with the flow of my own energy and what I need. So that's, that helps to stay balanced. Cause like when I know I need to stop, I just have to stop. So I'm really good about making sure that I rest and that I take time for myself. I end every single day, almost every single day, I'd say five days a week. I end my day in a big salt bath and candles lit and uh, listen to a meditation or some sound healing and just really clear my space and take time to just rest. And actually I answer, I do a lot of social media in my bathtub because it's peaceful and I can really, I, I respond to every single comment from my heart. So I don't like auto responders and I manage my social media myself. And so um, my, my evenings, if I'm ever responding at night, it's probably because I'm in my tub and it's so peaceful. I usually do a meditation and then I feel like, okay, I can connect in with people and really see what everybody's saying and what's going on. And I respond to my text messages then and that kind of thing. So it's kind of a funny little routine I have. Well, good. It sounds like you have a good system, and I'm sure that's helpful for a lot of people here listening. We have to, yeah, we have to stay really balanced so that we can be in a place where we can help everyone else and assist them on their journey and be able to text and respond and all of that. So, wow. Well, this has been just a plethora of information and beauty, and I'm really grateful to hear all that you're doing and that you're going to continue doing it and how everyone can plug in. And um, is there anything else you wanna share about your mission or what you're doing before we end? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I think the only thing I wanna share is that one thing that I'm really passionate about is that Buddhist biohacker is taking a stand against violence. And I just want everybody to understand that our stand against violence is because there's a lot of, um, trauma coming up with this global ascension. The events in across the planet are, are activating us and it creates aggression and stress and trauma. And there's a lot of fear and worry. And so what I'm seeing is, um, a couple different things around violence is, um, really sharing violent comments on social media because we don't agree and it creates polarization. And I also see Julie Hoyle put it so beautifully on one of the podcasts that one of our biggest acts of violence is on ourselves by not living true to our soul purpose and sharing our inherent gifts and talents. And so I bring this up at the end because it's just so important. It's so important that we have compassion and that we practice nonviolence with ourselves, with each other, because the only way that we're going to unify is by coming together. And that means we have to love the wounded and the wounders, and that's not easy. And so it's about forgiveness and it's about compassion. And, and I just believe believe that everything that we're doing on Buddhist Biohacker at One Heart, One Earth, everything that he's doing in our individual practice and every healer and light worker and empath and starseed and all of you guys that are listening, like it takes all of us to have unconditional and equal love for each and every sentient being on the planet for us to move forward. And that is, that is my mission. Like at the end of the day, my mission is to help give you the tools to be able to stand in your own truth, to live true to your authentic gifts and talents, and to be a compassionate human being and to practice bodhicitta. And it's just, it's everything. Thank you. 
And you know, what's interesting is that a lot of times um, people say, gee, you're always working, but when you're really doing your mission and your purpose, it doesn't feel like work. Like you taking the bath and doing social media. And I have clients all over the world and sometimes it's eight, nine o'clock at night and I'm still texting or doing a call, but it rejuvenates me. And I have days where I do nothing, but I've tried going away and taking a week or two weeks off and I feel fulfilled when I'm shaking that rattle and drumming and helping someone through a process. And so I want to share that, you know, to everyone who's watching that you're sitting with two women that are on purpose and we have a mission and it's not hard work and you'll have the energy and you'll have the time and you'll want to make it because it inspires you and it's your soul food. And so I just encourage you to hop on Lisa's train in whatever way feels right to you and experience a little bit of everything or all of it. Just jump right into the river. So um, thank you, Lisa. And thank you everyone for listening. And I look forward to hearing everything that you're creating in the future. Oh, thank you so much, Eve. I really um, just really love you so much and I just appreciate you doing this and and just infinite love to you for sure So thank you. Thank you. Yes, and love to you, too So everyone enjoy and follow up follow up with her